just want to talk about there's methods and there's strategies that are really going to help, but you've got to make sure that, one, you're prepared for it. And I really spent some time the past few days, and really yesterday and today, thinking about, hey, what are the biggest challenges that we have and how do we fix them? Hey, this is Blake Sloan. I've been selling real estate over 14 years. Our team of highly trained professionals, along with our unmatched marketing, has sold thousands of homes here in the Myrtle Beach area, and this is how we do it. Fear is what drove the big challenge for everyone. Why? Drive them all the time. Yeah, but here's the thing. Rates go up, affordability issue, right? Right now, it's still pretty easy. And I want you guys to understand that and really how to combat it going forward. And this is the, really how we're going to do it. And this is how I did it last time. But the number one driver here that you got to be aware of and worry about is fear. Because what happens is once you start to see data that the prices start to drop, what happens? No? Buyers want to wait. Why? Every person you talk to says, I want to wait, want to wait, want to wait, because the market's going down, the market's going to crash, the market continues to crash, going down. And then all of a sudden, there's this fear, then all of a sudden, it creates more of a stalemate because buyers don't want to buy. And if they do, they don't want to buy at the bottom, at least in their mindset. Does that make sense? And so there's ways around that, but the number one thing that you got to worry about, this is all together, that's going to be the number one problem going forward in a market share, market change. Once we see some issues, and I think the way things looked, obviously, we'll probably see some of that a little bit. But our good news is there's ways around that. But your number one challenge in shifting market is going to be fear once the buyer fear sets in. I don't think we have most of that because a lot of people are still very bullish. You get a few days like yesterday that stack up, guess what happens? People start to get very, very scared in that and that's okay because as a good salesperson and as someone who understands the market, I can really navigate this and help my clients navigate. Why? Because when it came back, it was very, very, very high in terms of the overall bull run that came afterwards. But here's the thing, number one thing in terms is fear. So how do I, how do I combat that? I want you guys to understand that you have to really, really become a data master going forward because data it's going to help you do one thing. What do you think it's going to help you? Educate your All right, to do what? Yes, you're going to help neutralize the fear. I can neutralize the fear by doing so. Man, I had a great point earlier. Hey, look, real estate has really gone down. Here's the thing. It's great. What happened yesterday in the stock market? Never once in history ever, ever, ever has real estate dropped 10% in one day. Ever. Never, ever, ever in history has real estate dropped 22% in four days maybe 10% in a year or 20% in a year. And so what does that tell me from an investment standpoint? So the safest investment long-term for sure. And it has really the most utility, right? Or the most value I can use in terms of the value exchange with the consumer. So I've got to become a data master in terms of this. And I got to really talk about what? Long-term data, long-term information, long-term things for me in that scenario. Right, but I want to understand the data. I'll help give this to you, but you got to be able to do what? Rattle this off and have those scenarios and start talking about that and really being able to bring some confidence to your clients as things become really more fearful for them if they do become more fearful. You guys with me on this? But here's the thing if you do this right, understand that we can all make a ton of money and take a lot of market share in doing so. Very, very, very doable. And I'll talk about this in a minute why, because the overall part of that. I've got to make sure I believe in two things and I have the data to back it up. Number one, I've got to believe the product. Number two, and the same one, the destination. What does that mean there? Product destination. Product. Yep, the product is us here, Myrtle Beach, right? Products, Myrtle Beach, sorry, products that house this year, real estate investment, aka the vehicle. This is the vehicle which holds value. The vehicle holds value in terms of them living in it. And here's the thing, no matter what happens uh, in the stock market with interest rates, every single day, guess what continues to happen? The sun comes up and life continues to go on. And so through that process, there's gonna be needs, there's gonna be places, but they need a safe place to put money when that happens. The good news is, in my opinion, this time is not driven by housing. Last time the crisis was driven by housing. This time it's not driven by housing and housing's still very scarce and guess what? People still have to live. They still have to have places to live. And what happened after the last time, there was a shortage up to 5 million units in terms of uh, ability for people to have housing. 
you look at what happened over the last decade, right, population growth outgrew the pace that houses were being built, which now creates a supply and demand issue. If I'm looking for a product that holds value, guess what that looks like? Something like a house that holds value, that can rent it, I can exchange it, I can live in it and do all these things, and we don't talk about that as well. And so we want to get better at our messaging and my sales ability to sell on what? Housing, right, as a value holder, and the destination here being Myrtle Beach and South Carolina, which by, you know, obviously data is what? You guys remember I talked about this last week. What is it? It's literally the fastest growing city in the whole country. Yeah. Second year in a row. Yeah. Right? Two straight years, fastest growing city in the country. Why? Because it's a great destination you want to be. It's affordable. It has low taxes, low property taxes, all these things that come along with that. I got to be that much better at really articulating that and having the conversation with people. And part of that's going to be my ability and my ability to make money is going to come down to my Really, my ability to communicate and collide with people on those two things. I'll say it again. My ability to make money in the next process or cycle is going to be the ability to communicate and collide with people on those two things. It's going to be number one, product. Number two, uh, destination. Because it's either going to be a place to live or a place to invest. And there's always going to be smart people that want to buy in those scenarios and buy in those processes. Okay, and here's the thing, we're going to work a lot more on that as part of the plan, but I want you guys to be aware of kind of what that means and what's going to happen. Fourth part of this, this happened a lot last time, and it's something that you've got to be aware of when it has to do fear. And you have to get very, very good at this, and I want you guys to go back and read this book. The book's called Sell or Be Sold. The reason I put that as a topic is what happens? When you're making dials and they say, well, I'm not going to buy right now. I'm going to wait to the dip. Then what do you start doing? Believe. You start believing it. And so you got to understand the power of, hey, look, I need to know my data. I need to be able to make really good decisions. Understand, here's what's happening with the data. Here's what happens for long-term investment. Here's what's happened for me. And i got to be someone who can be very, very good at selling that. Looking back, right, in that time period, there's very, very smart people that made those type of investments. And so if you're looking at understanding, hey, look, the market's going down a little bit, but I'm buying it for a long-term hold and a rental you know, strategy, that doesn't really matter that much. And my job as the agent is to help really articulate this and cloud with them in that process. Does that make sense for you guys? Yeah. yeah. And so it's very, very, very important to do that. The second problem that you have with them is urgency. What does that mean? The problem is you have to show a lot more houses all of a sudden because people don't want to make decisions. They want to wait and they want to see what else comes back because all of a sudden these lower deals may come through and they think they can wait to get a better deal. Now this is going to be a bigger problem compounded even for sellers because a lot of sellers will be locked in at 2.5 or 3% interest rates for them to buy something else. It's going to be 6.5 and here's the thing. You've got to be able to build urgency in this. Now to build urgency what I need to know? Somebody said it earlier, too, in the very first part of it. i got to deeply understand and know what? Why. Their why. Very, very important on the next level part. What that means is, do they have a problem? A.K. the pain, whoever said that, right? And do they want to solve the problem? If you remember earlier, I talked about something that just said, hey, here's the deal, no matter what happens in the financial markets and real estate market, the same thing happens every day. The sun comes up and what continues to go on? Life, right? And so through that, what happens? People have children, people get divorced, people hate where they live, taxes go up, all these things happen that make people have a reason, aka a very big why to do what? deeper, deeper, to move. And so what we did last time, we just got very, very good at finding people who what? Who want to move, have to move. Why? Because it's much more affordable than rent, right? In many cases or scenarios, and they want to be able to move somewhere else where they're more happy in life. So they cut down spending in one area, they have to up it up in another area, and that's something that really is going to be very, very helpful going forward. So the most important thing I had to get very good at last time though is understanding their why. Why is that? 
I have to use the Y to build urgency. Have to use the Y to build urgency. Super important. Before, you'd have to know the Y. Why? Because you're in a frenzy. In a frenzy, the Y doesn't matter. Everybody just wants to buy. Same thing happened in 2005. We have people that are buying two and three houses at the same exact time. Because why? It's a frenzy. So when the frenzy went away, we had to get very, very good at being deeper with people, understanding the why, the ins and outs, and the really ultimately the pain of what they had so I can help massage the pain to help them want to make a decision. But you've got to get very, very good at that. If not, they're going to wait and see more houses as more inventory comes and prices continue to slow down or go down. They're going to want to see more houses and guess what they're not going to want to do? Put offering. It's a big problem we had, and so I got very, very good, and we taught our team, who was much smaller back then, how to get very good at building urgency with people. Which is very, very easy to do if you understand something. And the next piece you got to do is, the second part is I got to get very, very good at mastering influence. I want to put really influence and psychology. Specifically, the psychology decision. What would that mean? Yes, the whole process we have is uh, strategic seduction. Really, is that's what it is, and we'll train a lot more on that. The, the, the psychology of, of of sales. As long as I understand how people think, and I get very, very good at it, I'll outsell everybody. All you gotta do is change a few sentences and a few words and things how you say stuff. You change part of your verbiage when you're showing property part of your verbiage at a listing presentation, whatever it is, you just get very, very good at understanding that and saying, here's how I get good at understanding the urgency piece, making sure I get around that. Does that make sense for you guys there? Third piece I want to get very, very good at here overall is that I get very good at future pacing. Future pacing, what does that mean, you think? Yes, yes. Here's what's going to happen. Should you write that word down? Here's what's going to happen. Here's what I need you to do. John and Mary, here's what's going to happen next, right? We're going to see some houses. Market still prices are still, you know, backside a little bit. We want to get you locked in the right house at the right time, right? Interest rates still may be going up. So we want to make sure that we're able to go through and look at houses and we find the one that you want. I need you to let me know so we can pull that trigger very quickly. Either there's not multiple offers, I want to make sure we can get you the best deal on that and make sure you get you the best possible price with interest rates. Whatever the date is that I need, I have to help them because here's the deal. It's fearful and they need somebody with certainty who can help guide them in that process. And once again, looking back to 2009, 10, 11, there's a process in time when prices are still slowly going down. Then the foreclosures came in, right? And they're still slowly going down. But anybody that's still buying then, guess what they did? They made a ton of money going back. If I could go back in that time, I would have bought everything and anything. Why? Because the long-term cycle, right, and real estate is a long-term cycle, comes way back up usually on the back end. Really forever it's done that. Are you all with me on this? And so part of that is how I help my clients think long-term. And then things go back to, they start buying houses they want based on what their needs are, what their desires are. And all of a sudden things are a little more, I think, a little better than it is when it's in a frenzy because people have to settle for things that aren't really as good as what they really want. Are you with me on this? Very, very, very important for me to do overall from that standpoint. That's very important. That. Yes. Fourth piece here of this. I get very, very good at finding what we call must move clients. Yeah, like I got to have to search, search some more. That make, make more phone calls? Yeah, be better at communicating? Yeah, right? So overall, what you do is we did that last time. We got very good at finding must-move clients because they knew, hey, look, it's an opportunity for me to get into the market now, and it's much better than me renting before. So all of a sudden, first-time buyers were really a big part of the business coming in, buying properties up. And then what really sprinkled in last time was a good amount of smart investors who were just buying properties. They had sat back. They had sat on some cash. All of a sudden, they would come in and buy properties at a good deal, and they rent them out, hold on to them. And if you can find three or four or five of those, you can do very, very, very well as an agent. But my whole radar needs to be focused on what? Must move buyers, meaning I listen to language a little differently. I listen to things they say. They're not going to tell me, hey, look, I must move, but they're going to tell me things that allow me to identify them as a must move client. 
the main key factor here that's going to differentiate is going to be discipline. It's the main separator. You're going to see craziness that comes up in the news. One day you're going to see all like, the stuff like yesterday, right? It's kind of a shock to see that. You see the stock market background with everything red. You're going to see these certain things, and all of a sudden, what happens is very easy to get sucked into that. Here's the deal. I've got to make sure I master my discipline here. And the key part for me to do is I make sure I'm going through. I've got to master the middle. What does that mean? Master the middle. Master the middle. What does that mean? Yes. So what does that mean? I don't allow the high highs and the low lows. I don't ride the highs, I don't ride the lows. Guess what I do? Keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up. The news, the news cycle, and the news cycle is designed to do what? To sensationalize things, to make sure that you can keep tuning in. And the one main difference I was thinking about this time from last time is gonna be social media. Because now everyone's addicted to their phones, right? All of us, myself included in that, and all of a sudden you can get that data information quicker and you can be sensationalized quicker. And so if you become victim to that, it's all because you allowed yourself, you have to match to the middle. And eventually, guess what happened? We start winning, started winning, kept winning, kept winning. And all of a sudden, we just kept winning while everyone else was falling victim to circumstance outside of what was going on. Does that make sense? And so the one way to beat it is just keep showing a match to the middle. How it leads the call. And our advantage this time versus last time, I have tons and tons and tons of capital that I've been saving very strategically that we can deploy to make sure we can outspend and capture market share. All these other agents buying fancy cars and all that stuff, guess what I've been doing? Stacking cash so we can come in and dominate when things do shift a little bit. Because now the marketing messages matter. The guarantee we buy it matters, right? The ads we run matter. And so that's what's really a lot different in terms of that. And that's something I think is a huge advantage for us allows us to capture market share and allows you to capture market share as an agent. Does that make sense? In 2005, when things were so crazy, I was so hungry, I could never really get any traction. Why? Because the market was so hot, I was this new guy, no one knew who I was, no one cared who I was. But then as things slowed down, people started really slowing themselves down and guess what it gave opportunity to? People to come in and really capture more market share and do new things and it was probably the best thing ever happened. That makes sense, you guys? I remember in 2005, I'd run ads in these the magazines. I did everything. Guess what? They didn't want the guarantee. There's no way to differentiate because everybody else who'd been doing it for so long already had people in relationships and they just kept having a frenzy with them. Massive opportunity right now going forward with that from that standpoint, right? <laughs> Second piece of this is I must have consistency. These two are together, but I must have consistency. This is going to be more important than ever because momentum is hard when you're in a down cycle. It really goes back to what we talked about that it's much easier to keep up than to catch up. And so if I can't get that part, it's really going to do something where these next two are kind of together. The, here's what's going to happen. I'm just going to break it down to you. The people that don't have discipline through a down cycle are going to be very, very exposed very quickly. All of a sudden, you go from 10, 10 pendings to one or two pendings. You can't figure out why, right? In many cases, a lot of times it's going to come down to this. They're getting exposed. Because here's the thing. I was talking to Alex about this. It doesn't feel different yet until it's way different. Does that make sense? And what happens is most people lose their momentum or their consistency, uh, and it really gets exposed very, very quickly. And then what's that? It's hard to dig out of there. And so the more you keep up, right, the more market share you grab quicker, it's just a lot easier because then you have enough to sustain and as things contract, you're already expanding at the same pace so it doesn't really matter. That's why I was telling you guys a month ago to really increase your activity so that when things do slow down, you don't really make a difference. Does that make sense? And so what happens is you have to have this part in terms of that. There's got to be consistency in my time, my hours, all those things got to be very, very consistent. Number one, you're going to need it because of a mental standpoint, right? It's going to be a mental battle, which is fine. And the good news is it's a great opportunity. Last part of this is you got to be very, very good at learning and growing. Learning and growing. You have to adapt. 
I just see what's going on, right? What's happening? How do I say these things a certain way? I'm studying books like crazy. Why? Because psychology and sales really make a big difference. And I have to be good at adapting to what? What their fears are. What their, their inner thoughts are. All these things are important. And the ones that grow and just keep listening and listen to audiobooks and the right podcasts and all those things, they continue growing overall in that scenario. Make sense, you guys? Super, super simple in that part. Now, fourth piece here. It's kind of connected to it, but it makes a massive difference, and you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it, and the thing you can't avoid in this part here is the hustle. The hustle piece of it. But the bottom line is this hustle going forward is going to be the main differentiator. The main differentiator. Here's the thing. The ability to be able to have that hustle is going to really separate the people who don't. And what happens is as things change, you're going to have to be very, very, very good at hustling. What does that mean? Scrappy. If i got to be scrappy a little bit, i got to be scrappy, right? Most of these are going to be who, who can work out, outwork the other people. All of a sudden, what happens? We just out hustled everybody when things shifted. And all of a sudden, we became really kind of far ahead. And it was just easier than us. And we were kind of living it up where everybody else was struggling. But you only have to hustle for a small amount of time to, to see a difference, if that makes sense. You guys with me on this? I lose you. During that time period, initially, we went from a small office to a next office, which is bigger. And uh, things just grew like crazy. And we brought brand new people on. So they didn't do real estate in 2005 and 6. And so here's what I kind of wrote down what most agents did. What the old school agents did is they laid down their swords. They were so used to riding the frenzy on how things were that really what their skill set was and their benefit, it ended up hurting them the most. All they talked about was what? How it used to be and how the market is so difficult. I was thinking like, man, this is way easier because now they don't really care about whoever the number one agent over there was. They would listen to me and they would value what I would say. They value my presentations. And so all of a sudden it was much easier for me in terms of that based on what was going on. Most agents, I'm telling you, will lay down their sword. If you're hungry and you got hustle, guess what you can do? Capture their business, period. And I have to do that by hustling. Mentality-wise, activity-wise, and here's the thing, you can't fake it. But it's way easier. You with me on this? Very, very, very important in that scenario. Third piece of this, which you guys understand this and write this down, probably the number one thing you take from today. Commitment beats any market condition. What does that mean, you think? Condition beats any market condition. Anybody that's committed is going to make money either way. No matter what the market is, I'll continue to find a way for us to win. I'll continue to invest money for us to win. The main difference from the, the, this time versus last time is I have lots and lots of capital to help us do so. Uh, it's nothing like last time, but I'm just telling you, when buyer fear comes in, it creates this domino effect of just buyers being fearful. I think we won't see anything that we did like foreclosure-wise because why? Homeowners have much more equity now, and they have much lower loans on their property. Versus last time people were doing cash out, refis every day, 2008, I'm sorry, 2005, everybody was ha having all this money. What they were doing is they were living off their equity. So everyone that you knew... They were driving all these new cars, were cashing out equity on their houses, thought it would never go back down again. Things are a lot different this time. Does that make sense to you guys in this? But I want you to understand, I'm really, really kind of looking forward to it because the ones that got the hustle and the ground of commitment are going to dominate going forward. The ones that have the mental, last part here for you guys, stamina are going to dominate. But the whole piece here is I have to have the stamina. What does stamina mean exactly? Can I keep running? Not just a sprint, right? Sprint for a day, take a week off. I got to make sure that I can have the long-term stamina to do what? Just keep showing up, 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 no matter what. And all of a sudden I look up three months later, six months later, 12 months later, and I'm dominating and I'm actually where, ahead of where I was. But the part of that is it does, it's probably going to go like this though, right? We're up here, you're going to see a dip, all of a sudden you're able to go like this right here. You know why? 
If I can do the right way, I can help my activities and my hustle and my discipline are going to help me bridge this gap here. And I'm going to capture the market share here that the average person who lays their sword down is going to give up. Why? Because they have no training. They have no really uh, guidance. They're just here selling in the frenzy. It's very, very easy to sell in the frenzy. And so I'll continue with my commitment to help us dominate like we do, right? Make certain adjustments on the fly, however we need to do, and make sure we're able to do it. But I'm just telling you guys, it's going to have to be a decision that you make from the inside out in terms of if you want to dominate or not. Not everyone in the room is going to be able to do that. Why is that? Because we just know you got to be able to show up. Do I want you to be able to do it with me? Absolutely. I'm prepared and I'm committed. And so now what happens, I'll make sure that we do so. But I want you guys to know, like, look, dude, this is not that big. Here's the deal. I may be way overreacting from, from you know, what it is, but I'm going to lead that charge to make sure that we're able to make sure that we continue to adjust and dominate. Does that make sense? And the reason I want to do it and share this is because a lot of people saw it yesterday and kind of freaked out. Interest rates going up, not a big deal. Why is that? Because people still want to buy. And thankfully, we're not in Fargo, right, North Dakota. We're here in Myrtle Beach where a lot of people want to be, you know? The fastest growing city in the country two years in a row, it's not going to change from a demographic standpoint of who wants to come here. The good news is we'll be able to capture just as much market share. But it's all going to come down to my mindset and ability to do so. Does that make sense for you guys here in that part? Very important, very timely. I want you guys to do one thing for me is make sure you protect your mindset. When all of a sudden people just get to a very scarcity mode. Right now everybody's eyes just got a little big. Not here, but I meant like you know, metaphorically, right? People saw the news yesterday, the eyes started getting, they started saying, man, maybe it's not as solid as I thought it was, right? And all of a sudden, what you're able to do is just say, look, I'm prepared, we're prepared, you're on the right bus, that's going the right direction, uh, and we've been focused a lot more than just recruiting, right? We're focused on winning sales game, sales psychology, while these other people are just cold calling all day, I'm there learning, learning, studying, figuring out how we win the game. And that's the whole difference here in terms of what we do and how we're gonna continue to dominate.